In today's video, I've got five facts about Philo, or character analysis, from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero. But hey, if you're new here, why not join the 414 community by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And a quick warning that there will be spoilers, so, you know, just a heads up. But anyway, with that being said, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. So Philo is a Philolol that hatched from a monster egg purchased from the slave trader by the shield hero Naofumi Iwatani in episode 5 of the anime. Because of the monster tamer shield owned by Naofumi, Philo grew from a chick into a very large Philolol queen in like no time at all. And I'll get into more detail about her different forms later, but Philo's current Philolol form, or beast form resembles that of an owl, rather than the ostrich-like appearance of her previous forms. Her feathers are all mostly white now, apart from a small patch on her belly. Also, some of the feathers on her wings still contain the pink colour her feathers had in previous forms. And as we all know, Philo has the ability to transform into a human girl. In this form, she has the appearance of a young girl who has blonde hair, blue eyes with feathered wings on her back. She also wears a white dress that has a blue bow on her chest that is made from magical crystal threads that won't break when she transforms. Now, as for Philo's personality, I can only really describe it as unique. She has a very childish demeanour, very loud, very over the top, and can completely switch off if events around her do not interest her. She of course is what we refer to as a bottomless pit, and this is in reference to her eating habits. She can eat and eat and eat, but has zero table manners. She will eat absolutely anything, once she even looks at one of her own kind and thought it looked tasty crazy. And of course being a Philolo, she is attracted to anything shiny and will collect as many of these items as she can, though most of her so-called treasure is actually just trash. But as well as this, Philo is a very talkative person, though most of the time she speaks at like a million miles a minute and none of it really makes sense to anyone else. And you know, it's quite funny really, amongst her kind she's actually considered smart compared to the others, though she is actually as, you know, we all know, pretty much an airhead. She doesn't have the greatest common sense or understandings of culture and its behaviour. She's also been known to doze off while others are talking about things that do not interest her. Bless that short attention span of hers. And, you know, final point on Philo, though not the smartest, arguably her strongest quality is her amazing judge of character. It's crazy how she can just see through others' fake intentions. A fun one to watch is how she always gets in between Raftalia's plans of seducing Naofumi, simply because she knows Raftalia's true intentions. And, you know, most impressively is that there is a character coming up in the future that Naofumi decides to put his trust and faith in simply due to the fact that Philo trusts them fully. So Philo's stats are mainly boosted in both the speed and strength areas. She has overwhelming power, which is to be expected of her title as a Philolol queen, but at the same time surprising due to the sheer size of her in a beast form. As we have seen on a few occasions, Philo will utilize her speed to jump high in the air and then come down on her enemies, landing an overwhelmingly powerful skull crushing kick. Philo is nothing short of awesome. Just think, Moto Yasu took a kick to the crotch from Philo, and that's not the last one either. Damn. She has a pretty good understanding of magic and mana, or chi in this case. Over time, as she has gained more battle experience and leveled up, she has been able to accelerate her speeds even faster than normal due to the utilization of magic, to which hers is of the wind attribute. And now, of course, she does have one major disadvantage, and I'm sure you can guess what that is. Yes, due to Philo's size, it does make dodging and avoiding enemy attacks very, very difficult. This is where now Fumi comes into things, I guess. And just a minor spoiler, so skip ahead to the next fact if you don't want to be hit with it. So, Philo will eventually duel against another Philolo queen called Fatoria. Philo loses this duel, but learns a lot about her fighting style, and more importantly, because of this duel, Philo takes the advice of Fatoria, who says that her beast form, though more powerful, is also a disadvantage because you know, as previously mentioned, Philo is essentially a sitting target. Taking on this advice, Philo learns to control her power in her human form. 
So Philo's Japanese voice actress is Rina Hidaka. She has voiced other characters such as Silica in Sword Art Online, Enju Aihara from Black Bullet, Yuniko Kazuki in Axel World, Alice Sakayanagi from Classroom of the Elite, and more. Then we've got Philo's English voice actress, that is Brianna Knickerbocker. She has voiced other characters such as Rem in ReZero, Wiz from Konosuba, Elaine in The Seven Deadly Sins, Dana from The Lacrimosa of Dana, and more. So like mentioned earlier in the video, Philo came from a monster egg purchased by Naofumi. Due to his monster taming shield he gained from feeding some of the eggshell to the shield, we saw Philo grow pretty rapidly. On hatching, Philo was a pink small falolol chick that would sit on top of Naofumi's head. And this actually reminds me of Asta from Black Clover. Was it a nod to that series? Who knows. After only a couple of days, Philo was far too big to travel on her master's head. She was at the size now of a normal falolol. In this form, her feathers were a much lighter shade of pink, almost at a pure white. She was also able to pull a cart now, but the main instance we saw of this form was when she beat the dragon in the awesome foot race. Even though there was plenty of cheating going on from the opposing side, Philo's legs were incredibly fast, which was the difference in this case. Now also in this same episode, we saw Philo undergo an amazingly huge transformation. That was the giant owl looking bird. You know, of course I went over the appearance of that earlier, so I'll leave this out for this part. So in this form, she actually had far outgrown the size and form of a normal Falolol. Now Fumi actually took Philo to the slave trader so that he could investigate, and through his research, he found out that she is, or maybe is, a Falolol queen. Now Fumi actually decided to leave Philo with him for a bit for, you know, further research, but Philo kicked off big time due to being away from her master, which caused now Fumi to come back and pick her up sooner. And you know, Philo was actually quite hard to handle in her early days. She was very childish in the sense that she threw tantrums, she refused Naofumi's orders until she was fed, and would constantly transform whenever she wanted. To combat this and fix her personality, Naofumi threatened to sell her, and you know, of course, not forgetting the help of the slave crest that she now had. Philo started to behave much better, of course, after this, and in fact changed so much that she is now one of Naofumi's most reliable and trusted party members. Then, you know, final transformation was, you know, the human form that she took. She will often swap between this form, which is the appearance of the young girl I talked about earlier, and that of her beast form. So one of my favourite things about Philo is how she interacts with the other characters. She has this really cheeky charm to her, and because she is an excellent judge of character, she certainly knows how to wind others up. Firstly, we'll start off with the great battle between the chicken and the raccoon. Yes, that's right, Philo's relationship with Raftalia. So, you know, though Raftalia wants Philo to see her as a mother figure, mainly to kind of satisfy Raftalia's own image in her mind that her and now Fumi are parents, Philo actually looks up to Raftalia as a big sister. And as well as this, like mentioned earlier, Philo of course sees straight through Raftalia and knows her feelings for now Fumi. Because of this, she often gets in her way and treats her as a rival for now Fumi's affection. Talking of Naofumi, Philo loves her master. Even when he makes decisions that, you know, are quite questionable, Philo will stand by him. She is so fond of Naofumi that Philo thinks of him as her property and has told Raftalia that she will not lose to her. But of course, it's not all love and care. Philo hates the spear hero Motoyasu. Ever since he called her lame and a fat bird, Philo has always made an effort to kick him in the crotch on every meeting. Poor guy, but my god, does he not deserve it. But thanks for watching, this is my video, five facts about Philo from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to see more characters from the series, let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, as it really does help my videos reach a wider audience, and subscribe for more anime content. Until next time, my fellow weebs, peace!